we interrupt your regular viewing to show you this three and a half thousand dollar chimney that we just bought. And you're probably thinking, Christ on a bike, that's cheap. Well, yeah, it is, but it has a few issues. We're gonna show you in the video what they are and how we're gonna fix them in the upcoming build series. So stay tuned. So what do we reckon? It's pretty cool, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. It's very smooth on the road. Yeah, as long as you don't drive over anything more than about a five cent coin, you're all right. Yeah, that might have been a 10 cent back there. Surprisingly spacious in the front, not in the back obviously. Two chairs and a table and it's full. We've already gone above GVM, which is probably an issue. <laughs> so what are we doing today? So Bradley, I reckon we go out to the Nangara Pinnacles and test this thing out. Oh, my Repco click and collector in It's the engine oil for this vehicle. Oh, did you order the turbo through them as well? Yeah. yeah. I just asked for the biggest turbo they had off the shelf. Okay. They did say it's for like a prime mover, but I thought it would probably be alright. <laughs> I just want to be able to take a fridge and a chair. Okay, so you'll need a large turbo. How much can this thing tow? It's got a tow bar. In its current so, form, I probably wouldn't tow anything more than a skateboard. I was going to say, you could have a mate on a wheelie chair. You'd probably get away with that. You might need to grease the bearings on the chair. <laughs> it's a zippy little machine. It feels like a go-kart. There is a little bit of wobble in the steering wheel at 70. I don't know whether that's because of those bearings we were talking about. So suspension is definitely on the list of things to check out. We probably need new shockies. I did notice that some of the rubber bushes on them are a little bit worn, so they might need a little bit of love. The old mate was saying it wouldn't go into overdrive, but I haven't noticed any issues, so yeah. I don't know about that. Maybe topping up the ATF might have helped. So we've done about 70k since I fueled up and it just hasn't moved. The needle has literally Lovely. moved about two millimeters. So the pines is a good little testing ground, hey, like we've taken our cars there before. Mm. It's a little bit messy. It'd be nice if people took their rubbish with them, but that would be very nice. Road noise is not too bad too, eh? Nothing on the roof and then road tires as well. So yeah. there's nothing that would really create too much noise. I'm Andrew St. Pierre White. Join me as I share my passion for four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts. Hold on, Bradley. Waka, waka, waka. Hydraulic handbrake. <sighs> Wasn't too bad. I thought you were going to roll it. Those brakes were. And 70. You can hear the injection rotor spooling up. You actually can. Yeah. It has this little line. It's going to be droned out by the turbo. You know, the other thing is like when you say one of us says something stupid and the other one looks at the other and then you zoom in on the person <laughs> looking, you know what I mean? Zoom in on the face and it's like. <laughs> Alright, so we're in very deep sand at the moment and I'll tell you what. <laughs> Sounds like the coils are just bottoming out every time. That was like the smallest mound I've I know, ever been over. That, that can't be normal. We're still in two wheel drive, eh? Yeah. And it's just conquering this. Oh, it's full on um, conquerage. <laughs> this is Man, like, it's only two o'clock and I already feel like I've done so much influencing today. I know. It's because this is such an influence in car, Bradley. How fast are we doing? What? 40? Uh, like full lock right now. We're doing at least 40. <laughs> I mean, this is just phenomenal. Should we put it in four wheel driven? Do we wait until we get bogged before we put it in four wheel drive or do we just... I think we should... Um, do you know what I mean? Like we just see if we get bogged? Until I reckon we will get bogged actually. I just think we will. Yeah. Looking at that, yeah. so much rubbish, man. It's crazy, isn't it? it sucks. All right, full drive. Send it. Hold the button down. Wait uh, for the beepies. Are oh, you gonna be in neutral? All right, we'll hold full drive, and you you hear the click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Should go low range. Goes, yeah, we low should. range, mate. All so right, it beeps send. At you Back in drive. Full speed. Look, it, it, is this a Tesla? Steers itself. Is this? Wow. Okay, I should probably steer because I don't really want to get bogged. Oh, goodness. Oh, Bradley, this, this sand is quite deep and dirty. I don't really want to get stuck in it. Dude, if we get stuck, I've got a shovel. Oh, yes. <laughs> Only marginally better than using our hands. <laughs> it's got about the same surface area as an open pump. <laughs> Ooh. Like what? It should not make such loud Funky noises. beefcake when we're barely doing anything, you know? Yeah, we need to look into that. Oh. Just, I, I, I like yeah. cringe every time I hear it. No, it's, oh, the thought of what that's doing to my undercarriage. I don't ever want to think about your undercarriage. <laughs> Bradley, now it's our common <laughs> undercarriage. Smorgasbord of rubbish out here. Yeah, like who, who thinks, oh, I'm going to head out to the pines and just dump like a couch or yeah. a fan. Oh, you actually can choose between D and 3. Look at that. By going to the side, 
So that will turn overdrive off. That's why it doesn't have the button. You just slide the stick. Ah, that makes sense. So boxy. No, dude, we, we want to just test it out. We right, haven't even let the tyres down. Let it's me... a stock chimney. I've heard stock chimneys are better than like a patrol on 40s. Right. Seriously, very capable. That's a fucking reverse. Can you go through this really soft bit, please? The what do you want me to do? Just get bogged in there. Just go. <laughs> How you just go into the soft stuff? I reckon it'll just, right. it'll just float across it. Are we going? Send. I got the shovel ready. Oh, you're gonna hit, hit that with a bit of speed. Oh, there goes the suspension. <laughs> what is that noise? It's just everything in the back rattling about. Oh, we're gonna get bogged. Stop. <laughs> so you know how you asked me to bring the air compressor? We didn't bring that, did we? No. Brad's words were, we're not going to go anywhere where we need to let the tyres down. <laughs> well, we're there right now. Like I said, I thought they were good. I don't really want to get bogged. It's going to be a pain. Well, we are bogged. Are we actually? Well, you're not going forward, so let's put it that way. Let's go backwards. <laughs> Here we are, in the chimney, and we're reversing out of a bog situation. Second gear low. Go, go, go. I can keep an eye on that temperature gauge, man. I can smell it. It smells hot. Look how much fuel we used in that amount of fuel driving. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, rather, you just got to single hand it. Left. Oh, where are you going? I've missed the turn, Bradley. <laughs> well, I mean, we can go up there. Do you want to just go see what it looks like? It sounded good. That was concerning. <laughs> Berries. Yeah, that's a good amount of berries. Floor to the foot. <laughs> so it'd be somewhere, somewhere oh, here. Oh, oh, oh. oh, yeah. No, not there. Oh, it's just there. Yeah, we'll fit in there. We're Everywhere. just in there or wherever we are? Yeah, going? I think so. Alright, let's start with the exterior. And the first thing you'll notice is the clear coat has started to peel. Not a big issue, we can get to that at a later date. Up here we are missing a little window washer nozzle. Again, not a big deal. These headlights, they are pretty good, but we will probably give it a bit of a restoration with one of the kits. These roof rack bolts, they've started to rust, so we want to get them all out and treat the rust properly and then give it a good paint under there to seal it. Down here, this little trim piece is missing. Not a big deal, we'll try and pick one of those up from the wreckers. And then at the back of the car is the famous Jimny boot. So we got some Doritos, a recovery kit, and a bit of raspberry juice. And the previous owner was kind enough to give us some springs, which we may install as well. Up here, and this is a pretty common area for cars to rust in, but it has started here as well, so we'll get in here, tidy it all up, and repaint it. Now these wing mirrors, the motor seems to not work, so I'm not sure whether it's just the motor that needs changing out or whether it's an electrical issue. And finally, tyres. Now these are just some pretty common road tyres. We want to get some all-terrains on there just for a bit more tread and thicker sidewall. Interior-wise, the chimney's pretty stock standard except for this Bluetooth head unit, but it's not working correctly at the moment, so we'll probably change that out at a later date. Aircon and heating works pretty well. Now the four-wheel drive system in these is engaged with a vacuum type system that locks the front hubs, so these are the buttons to engage it here. It's four-speed auto, fourth gear is the overdrive. The seats aren't too bad, they're a little bit dirty, but we might just grab some uh, cheap seat covers to whack on those. And at the back, we'll probably end up taking these seats out to give us way more boot space. All right, let's check out the power plant. So this one's got the four-cylinder 1.3-litre petrol engine in it, and it's the M13A. So it was common from about 2000 to 2018 Jimny's. It's also coupled to the four-speed auto transmission. Now, apparently it's done 47,000 Ks, but based on what we've seen in the wear and tear, that's probably some of the hardest 47,000 Ks I've ever seen. The auto trans fluid was a little bit low when we first got it, so we topped that up, and the coolant was a little bit low as well. So we'll just monitor those as we go. We'll also replace this air filter in here when we do the major service. Service history wise, it looks like it got a service about two months after it was first purchased in 2008. However, that's all we've got to go off, so we're definitely gonna give it a good birthday. All right, so we're just getting underneath just to document all the chum. Basically, we've got a bit of grease coming out from the swivel hubs, so the engine's gonna need turboing. You can see the consistency there, indicating that a large turbo is needed. The exhaust is also a little bit too small <laughs> and not loud enough. That's going to need doing. But in all seriousness, there's a fair bit of oil dripping. These dish plugs look a bit rusty, dude. A bit rusty and crusty. <laughs> you should probably replace those. They're not leaking, though, so it's probably all right. There's a little bit of an oil leak coming from the front. There, rocker cover gasket, probably. 
it's pretty wet like around this general area and it's not that wet further forward so i'd say yeah it's probably rear main oh look she's pretty solid oh. <laughs> <laughs> the whole transfer case just moved <laughs> oh goodness so in general, this area looks fairly wet and this fluid, yeah, it's red. So I don't think it's engine oil. It's probably leaking from this output shaft from the gearbox and then landing on the drive shaft and getting flung around. This transfer case looks like it's a bit oily as well. So it's probably worth cleaning up this area really nice, taking it for a spin and seeing if we can locate the leaks. This rear section of the transfer case looks a bit wet as well. So it's probably worth checking out this seal. Other than that, it's fairly dry from like here back. This drain plug on the rear diff is weeping. So we probably want to change that and the gasket when we refill that diff. Bradley, overall, I'm very happy with our purchase, okay? Good. There's red dirt and stuff, but like, a bit of surface rust here and there, but it doesn't look like it's been abused off-road. Yeah. Mint. Thanks for watching, guys. We're super excited to get into the maintenance and mods on this car and take you along for the ride. If you've owned one of these or a similar small 4B in the past and you got some tips and tricks for us, let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Hi. I'm Andrew St. Pierre White. Join me as I share my passion for hitting the like and subscribe button on this particular video.